Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about central joint cell granuloma. In our previous lectures we have studied about ossifying fibroma, fibrous dysplasia, osseous dysplasia, familial gigantiform cementoma and today we will discuss about central joint cell granuloma. It is also known as uh, central joint cell lesion or joint cell tumor but we should not uh, you know call it by tumor we should call it rather granuloma or lesion because it is non neoplastic lesion central means it is found in the uh, bone okay where is it's another variant which is found in the peripheral or you can say the soft tissues that is known as a peripheral joint cell granuloma it is central because it is present in the bone okay uh, there are some lesions you know they demonstrate aggressive behavior similar to that of neoplasm but it is not a neoplasm okay uh, it is mostly reparative okay these lesions are designed as giant cell granuloma or by the more non uh, comital term giant cell lesion okay so it is better to call it lesion rather than tumor whether or not true giant cell tumor occur in the jaws uh, is uncertain and controversial some cases of extragnetic giant cell granulomas actually represent true giant cell tumors Okay, some cases of uh, extragnetic giant cell granulomas actually represent true giant cell tumors. Uh, if we talk about clinical and radiographic features, you know, it is most commonly found in, in the patient who are uh, 2 to 80 years of age and more than 60% of all cases occur before age 30. It is more common in female and it can be found that in mandible, anterior part of the mandible, and one characteristic feature of the central giant cell granuloma is that it crosses the midline. I will show the image where you can see the lesion which crosses the midline. Mostly it is asymptomatic but in some cases it may show you know pain paresthesia or perforation of the cortical bone plate. As mostly it is asymptomatic so it can be you know found in a routine radiographic examination or has a result of painless expansion of the affected bone. So in some cases it may cause painless expansion of the affected bone. Here we can see an image of the anterior part of the mandible. Okay, a, a blue purple mass is present on the anterior alveolar ridge of this four year old white boy. Okay, here we can see here is the lesion at the anterior part of the mandible. This is a closal view of a mandible. Okay, a closal view radiograph and it shows this radiolucency over the uh, you know anterior part of the mandible. This is central giant cell granuloma. Okay, there are uh, you know two categories on the basis of clinical and radiographic features. Mostly it is non-aggressive, and in few cases it is aggressive. If you talk about non-aggressive, there will be no symptoms. There will be slow growth and do not show cortical perforation or root resorption of teeth involved in the lesion, as compared to the aggressive one. In aggressive lesions, there will be pain, rapid growth, cortical perforation, and root resorption recurrence after treatment compared with the non-aggressive types okay so we talk about if we talk about the non-aggressive lesions if we operate those patients there will be less chances of recurrence but in aggressive patients there will be more chances of recurrence okay if we talk about radiographic features it is radiolucent defect okay it may be unilocular or it may be multilocular what is unilocular it means there will be single locule okay of a radiolucency if you talk about multilocular, it means there will be uh, you know different uh, or multiple radiolucentic uh, radiolucentic lesions on the radiograph. Okay, it is well def uh, delineated, but the margins are generally non-corticated. Mostly, it is of size of uh, five by five millimeter, but in some cases, it may be ten centimeter in size. The radiographic findings are not specifically diagnostic. Okay, small unilocular lesions may be confused with periapical granulomas or cysts. I will show you the image. Here you can see the radiolucent area present over here. It is the central giant cell granuloma, but it may be you know uh, we cannot distinguish whether it is a central giant cell granuloma or it is simply periapical cyst or periapical granuloma. Here we can see panoramic radiograph that shows the mandible, okay, and showing a large expansive radiolucent lesion in the anterior of uh, part of the mandible. Here we can see this lesion has crossed the midline, okay. So this is very large lesion over here, anterior part of the mandible. Okay, so if the lesion is multilocular, okay, the radi radiographically, you know, it may resembles that of the 
uh, amyloblastomas or other multilocular lesions. Areas of histopathologically, okay, if you talk about histopathological, uh, you know, uh, as the histopathological features, it may be identical to that of the aneurysmal bone cyst and intermixed with central odontogenic fibromas. Uh, its histopathological you know, characteristic may be identical to that of the brown tumors. That is why hyperparathyroidism should be ruled out in all instances. Okay? Multifocal involvement in childhood suggests cherubism and warrants further investigation so it is when it is present in the child and it has you know multilocular uh, lesions so it may be confused with that of the cherubism so it warrants further investigations mostly single lesions uh, okay but rarely they, there may be multifocal involvement is seen in patients who demonstrate no evidence of an associated disease such as hyperparathyroidism or cherubism okay mostly these lesions are uh, unilocular or may be present in single, you know, a single place rather than multifocal involvement. Okay, we will discuss about histopathological features. A few too many multinucleated giant cells in the background often avoid the spindle-shaped mesenchymal cells and round, round monocyte macrophages. Okay, there is evidence that these giant cells represent osteoclasts, although others suggest that uh, the cells may be aligned more closely with macrophages. Uh, you know you have to uh, remember these histopathological features i know it is a difficult thing to memorize it but you have to do it b uh, by your own okay there is no way you can uh, do it easily so you have to memorize these things okay the spindle shaped cells appear to be fibroblast related it has been proposed that the spindle cell component is the proliferating cell population and recruits monocyte macrophage precursors inducing them to differentiate into osteo and uh, clastic giant cells uh, by activation of the receptor activator of the nuclear factor rank or rank ligand signaling pathway okay it, the giant cells they are aggregated focally in the lesion tissue or in some cases it may be you know present diffusely throughout the lesion these cells vary considerably in size and shape from case to case some are small and irregular in shape and contain only a few nuclei in other cases, the giant cells are large and round and contain 20 or more nuclei. Okay. In some cases, stroma is in a loosely arranged and edematous. In other cases, it may be quite cellular. Areas of erythrocyte extravasation and hemosiderin deposition often are prominent. In older lesions, you know, considerable fibrosis of the stroma may be there. Foci of osteoid and newly formed bone. Uh, are occasionally present within the lesion. Lesions showing large uniformly distributed giant cells and predominantly a cellular stroma appears more likely to be clinically aggressive with a greater tendency to reoccur after surgical treatment. Uh, one thing you should remember that if the lesion is aggressive that will uh, have a more chances of recurrence as compared to the non-aggressive variant of um, central giant cell granuloma. Okay, we, we will discuss about the treatment and prognosis. Uh, if the uh, you know lesion is smaller then we can go with curettage but larger uh, series of cases recurrence rate uh, range from 11 to 50 percent or greater most studies indicate a recurrence rate of about 15 percent to 20 percent remember the non-aggressive is less you know uh, has a less chance of uh, recurrence as compared to the aggressive one you know here it is also mentioned here and one thing uh, you should remember that uh, the younger patients has more chances of uh, uh, you know recurrence recurrent lesions often respond to further curettage you can do curettage of uh, that lesion as well if the lesion is smaller although some aggressive lesions requires more radical surgery for cure of course if the lesion is aggressive then it will need some radical surgery for cure okay if we talk about the aggressive tumors there are three alternatives uh, uh, to surgery Number one, corticosteroids, number two, calcitonin, and number three, interferon alpha 2a. So, weekly injections directly into the tumor with triamcinolone acetonide for approximately six weeks have been used successfully. Okay, these are the injections of triamcinolone, and it is used for six weeks. And uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, the injection type, and it is the non invasive type of uh, treatment for aggressive tumors. Okay, if you talk about calcitonin, uh, you know, daily for approximately 12 months uh, as uh, an intradermal injection or nasal spray. So, we can use calcitonin that may, will be used intradermally injection as an intradermally injection and as a nasal spray. 
for 12 months. Interferon alpha-2a alone or in combination with the surgery also has been reported to result uh, in uh, resolution of uh, large lesions, okay? That is because the drugs has anti-angionic properties. But there is one, uh, you know, problem. The side effects of the interferon alpha-2a therapy should be considered, okay? Which can include uh, flu-like symptoms like uh, fever, malaise, nausea, joint pain, weakness, and in rare cases, more serious complications including pancreatitis and drug-induced lupus erythematosus. So that is why we should, uh, you know, keep this in our mind, the side effects of the alpha-2a. So we should reserve uh, uh, this uh, use, the usage of this, uh, you know, alpha-2a. Rather, we should use the other, you know, modalities you know, for the treatment and pro uh, treatment uh, and management of uh, the central giant cell granuloma. If you talk about prognosis of central giant cell granuloma, it is very good, okay? And metastasis do not develop. So uh, with this, uh, uh, this lecture ends. And these are the references of this lecture. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this lecture. And if you enjoy my lecture, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will try my level best to make other videos on oral pathology. Okay. So till my next lecture, take care and bye-bye.